So what I had done today was the advanced lift. I also had the upper eyelid fluff. And in addition, I had the dot laser under eye. We just saw a clip of a patient who underwent cosmetic upper eyelid surgery, blepharoplasty, and a facelift by another surgeon. We're going to follow her journey uh, following these procedures, and I believe you're going to gain insight into what it's like to undergo these procedures, and you're going to also see my perspective on her outcome. And so watch to the end, and you'll see how she evolves from before and after her surgery. Now, what we see here, I'm going to sh point out a few things that I see. It's not a complete set of pictures, but what, what we can see is that she has these bands uh, over here, and that's due to a splaying of this muscle. There's two sets of muscle that splay apart, and, and what we want to do is bring those muscles together in the center. Uh, she has a bit of a jowl along her jawline, poor definition of the jawline, and her mid-face area shows some uh, hollowing due to the descent of the mid-face uh, cheek fat pad. Let's go back and see what her experience has been uh, following these procedures. So the procedure, all in all, I arrived at 1130, um, you know, to kind of do some pre-op stuff. I did arrive a little bit earlier because um, I did some video vlog. Um, and I left the procedure probably about um, 2.30, 2.45. So what we see here, first of all, her she's swollen. And swelling, of course, is normal uh, following a facelift or any major procedure on the face. Whether it's your eyes or your, your entire face, you're going to get some swelling. That's expected. She does have some asymmetry of, of the swelling. The right side of her face looks more swollen than the left. I'm not sure why that is, but sometimes the head wrap itself can inhibit the drainage of the fluid away. So even though uh, it's common to put on a head, head drape like this uh, following uh, a facelift or brow lift, in her case, uh, the right side of her face is swollen. It may be it's compressing the drainage actually away from her face. In addition, I don't see any drains clearly from her photograph. Uh, I always put drains in. Uh, I usually use two drains, one on the upper face and one on the neck. Uh, and that way I drain away a lot of the fluid um, that could collect uh, just from undermining the skin. In terms of the time uh, sequence that she's talking about here, she's talking about a time frame of only about three hours at max. That seems far below what a typical facelift eyelid procedure a time length it would uh, normally occur. It usually takes at least five to six hours if you want to do precise uh, surgery where there's markings and everything has to be uh, taken in step-by-step -step fashion in a very systematic way. It takes many hours to, to achieve symmetry and good results. So when she says it's three hours, it doesn't even sound plausible that the Eyelids, the laser in the lower lid, and the face could be all done in three hours. From start to finish, it was about 11.30 to 2.45. Um, but I did have multiple procedures, so it did take a little bit longer. Um, I really had zero pain. Um, I took um, 30 milligrams of Valium before, um, which really relaxed me. I fell asleep for quite a bit of the procedure. So a facelift under IV sedation, twilight sleep, you don't experience any pain or discomfort. I never give Valium, uh, certainly 30 milligrams prior to the procedure. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, once the patient is under anesthesia, there's no reason to add Valium. In fact, it can cause a little confusion about how much anesthesia to give during the procedure. Sometimes, if a patient is really anxious prior to the procedure, I will give them five to 10 milligrams of Valium max to try to keep them calm because I want them to approach surgery in a very calm and confident way. I don't want to have to manage their anxiety when I'm trying to focus on the procedure at hand. Um, had no pain whatsoever during the procedure. Um, and the only discomfort right now is 
um, the result of the dot procedure, just a, a little bit of mild burning sensation from the dot procedure. So she had a laser procedure done on her lower eyelid. Typically, uh, following a laser procedure, I put on these compressive uh, dressings, which are specifically uh, designed to reduce pain and discomfort following the procedure. Some people opt, some surgeons opt to just put ointment on the eyelid. Um, now, the pain that is associated with lasers commonly occurs uh, due to drying of the surface following the laser. So what I recommend patients do is if they're not going to use these compressive uh, dressings, then I would uh, tell them to apply ointment at least every 30 minutes while they're awake to keep the area moist. If you keep the area moist, it heals faster and there's less discomfort associated with the laser. And I experienced that with the, um, with the last procedure as well. So um, I go back tomorrow morning to have the dressings removed and get a little bit cleaned up. Um, and I'm sure that's gonna make me feel a whole lot better. And I will update you all tomorrow, um, you know, one day post procedure. But I just wanted to get on here and give an update of how I'm feeling today. I will sleep inclined today to make sure that swelling remains at a minimum. I'll ice today um, and then, um, you know, I will make sure I stay plenty hydrated and take the, um, the antibiotics. So my feeling about keeping your head in inclined is, uh, is, uh, or is elevated actually is not the way I treat the patient postoperatively following a facelift. I'd rather the swelling get redistributed to all the lymphatics around the face. Therefore, I don't believe sitting up does anything more than allow the swelling to descend into the neck. Um, as far as uh, the antibiotics, yes, I do believe you have to continue antibiotics for four days post-op uh, to prevent any infection. And as far as uh, cool compresses, well, yeah, I do think that cold compresses can minimize some of the, the swelling that you can uh, that can occur following surgery. I don't think it can get rid of all the swelling. I think the swelling is a natural evolution of the surgery, uh, but uh, cold compresses can certainly make you feel more comfortable and uh, it may uh, diminish some of the uh, swelling and maybe some of the oozing that may occur from the surgery, surgery itself. It's just, um, you know, with the upper bluff, it's a, if you can see, it's a little bit hard to close your eyes. So I do have some ointment in my eyes. Um, which makes things blurry, makes me feel a little bit tired, and I'm sure the Valium makes me feel a little bit tired as well. So it's common to have both the eyelid surgery and the face surgery done at the same time. Uh, she does have a little, uh, probably temporary weakness of the uh, right muscles around her eye that allow her eye to close. Uh, that's all going to go away in a few days, or hopefully within a week and it's all gone. Uh, in, in the interim, she has to apply ointment to the eye to protect the eye because if she doesn't have good closure of the eyelid, uh, there can be exposure of the cornea. So yeah, following surgery, sometimes you have to apply ointment to the eyeballs themselves in order to protect the eye itself. So just wanted to give you an update today. I'm not feeling bad. I'm just feeling a little bit tired um, and I will update you tomorrow. By the way, following these procedures, it isn't uncommon for people to feel a little depressed uh, immediately following the surgery. Uh, you know, you, you feel like you've gone through a major operation and now you feel a little bit like, uh, what have I done? But in, in the ensuing days, as things dissipate, the swelling goes away, your face doesn't look distorted, you're, not, you're no longer numb, there's no associated pain, all that depression will dissipate and go away. But it's not uncommon for people to feel tired and a little depressed following surgery. This is just another update the day of the procedure. This is about five hours after I did just wake up from a nap. Um, again, my voice is still groggy, so I guess just from, you know, kind of the medication and the nap and everything. Um, and I do have some allergy issues as well. I'd like to comment at this point about her 
uh, eyelid, eyelid and eyebrow position because we can see clearly that she has incisions that were actually in, extended beyond the eyelid itself. So the incision had to go beyond the uh, outline of the eyelid itself and extend over here into the temple because she actually has some ptosis of the brow. So the brow, her brows are actually pretty low, okay? And maybe she, uh, she and the surgeon decided not to do a brow lift. Um, doing a brow lift on this particular patient is a little trickier because she has a very high forehead. If we look at an outline of a ideal face, we can see that if it's more than six centimeters above the eyebrow, uh, it is, uh, if you do a brow lift, like an endoscopic brow lift, you can recess the hairline a little bit or, or a different procedure. In this case, because her, eye, her forehead is so high, I would recommend a gliding uh, brow lift, which doesn't uh, recess the hairline and would uh, correct this problem. But in this case, the surgeon and pro probably the patient decided not to go forward with a brow lift. But as a consequence of that, they had to compensate for this downward drift and so they had to extend the incision uh, temporally, as you can see in her photographs. So I just wanted to give an update so in some natural sunlight. Um, if I didn't have the under eye dot procedure, I really don't think um, you know anything would look too bad, just a little bit swollen. So again, it's that under eye dot procedure um, that I think is kind of the most um, you know noticeable as far as visually. I think she brings up a good point. Lasering the skin can take the longest period of time to heal. It's not the incisions themselves that can take a, a extended periods of time. Sometimes the laser itself uh, will take several weeks before it quiets down. Uh, whereas the a actual incision through the skin, you'll still see the incision, but it quiets down and the sutures can be removed more quickly. Uh, so what she's saying is correct. I'm not having any pain whatsoever, even with the under eye dot. I'm just having a little bit of discomfort um, on my ears. And I really just think that's because the head dressing um, they have on, you know, pretty tightly. So, um, and again, I wouldn't describe that as, you know, super painful. It's just a little bit uncomfortable. Um, the other thing I wanted to note was when I immediately got out of the procedure, I wasn't able to fully close my eyes. So they did have some ointment in there to keep my eyes moisture. Um, but after I did just wake up from a nap again and after the nap um, I just wanted to note that um, I am able to fully close my eyes so um, I did put the other just eye drops in to kind of clear that um, that ointment out because the ointment does make everything really blurry which is kind of just annoying um, so I did um, you know put the other drops in to clear that ointment out and then I'll con continue with those drops and I have done an additional application of the um, aquaphor on the under eye area as well as the incisions on the eyelids for that upper bluff. So it appears that that because she now, several hours later, can close her eyes completely, it appears that the inability to close her eye had to do with the local anesthetic that they injected at the time of the procedure. As it wore off, the nerve function around the eye, eyelids uh, uh, came back, and therefore she's now able to close her eye. So it wasn't anything but a temporary problem as I predicted. It's day two following the procedure, so I wanted to get on and give an update. Um, as you can see, I am significantly swollen. So the swelling in her case, it appears to be that he did fat grafting to her face. It doesn't appear just due to lymphatic congestion of her face. It looks like they actually injected fat uh, to compensate for some of those hollowed areas that we saw in the pre-surgical pictures. So the swelling following fat grafting is a totally normal uh, outcome and that will take several days to weeks before that all s settles down and, and uh, dissipates. So I really have these full chipmunk cheeks. 
Um, and I have this, he described it as a woody feeling. And basically it's just, it's really numb and really, really hard. So um, it feels like you're not even touching your own skin and you can kind of see some, some lumpiness and some bumpiness. So um, I'll show you the incisions here by my ear. You can see the incisions there as well as the incisions on the other side. So um, with the under eye, again, that's all from the dot procedure. That's not anything that, um, you know, I haven't been through before. So that's healing as to be expected. And with the upper bluff, um, you can see that that's healing as well. I actually keep forgetting that I even had that done because I, you really can't feel that at all. So the most thing that I notice is just this really tight sensation, just kind of on the lower face, um, almost like a pulling sensation. So um, the first day and yesterday, I basically pretty much tried to stick through, you know, everything through a straw. So um, I did eat some oatmeal, some sugar-free vanilla pudding, so really soft foods. So I agree with her. I, I think that uh, following the procedure, you can have this sensation of tightness of your neck and uh, on, uh, along your jawline. Uh, I do agree that you need to uh, first start out with soft foods or clear liquids and then soft foods and then over a couple days progress to a more solid food. We don't want you to have a steak dinner following the facelift. Uh, we want you to go easy and gradually uh, reintroduce your uh, normal diet. But um, everything she's going through is basically as expected. So I also want to point out about the incision around the ear. So sometimes you do have to go up along the hairline here if you're doing a deep plane facelift and then trail below the uh, hair tuft here and up over the helix of the ear and down and behind this little structure called the tragus and come out horizontally and vertically down and behind the ear and, ba and back along the hairline and into the hair itself. So it's like a, a large S-shaped incision and uh, that's a standard incision. It's better to uh, make an incision along the, the uh, anterior helix here rather than in the crease because it, it, didn't, it doesn't accentuate the crease here. If you do that, you get a very natural and uh, heals beautifully and natural incision. And uh, over time, uh, the incision is hardly uh, able to be noticed by anybody. It's the morning of the third day post-procedure, so just wanted to give an update for today. You can see there really hasn't been a whole lot of change. I still have a significant amount of swelling, so my face tends to look um, pretty distorted still at this point and a lot of tightness right in through here. Um, it's still very numb. She's describing a numbness and woody feeling on the face. Yes, when you undermine the skin, you are transecting those those little sensory nerves that give sensation to our face. So that will come back. All of that sensation will come back. It may take several months, but the sensation will uh, return and you should not end up with uh, any uh, areas of numbness on the face. It will, it will come back to its normal uh, sensation, but it may take time. Uh, and as far as the woody feeling, that could just be the swelling and the, uh, and the fact that she probably, I'm not sure, but probably had a fat graft done on her face, which also uh, creates more of a uh, turgidity to her face. And so that I think that's what she's experiencing right now. I still, you know, haven't had much change as far as the under eye dot procedure. Um, so just keep in mind, all this is not from the, the facelift procedure that's gonna be um, as a result of the dot procedure. The upper bluff is healing really nicely. That is a piece of cake. Um, I would say the healing from that is really very, very minimal. Um, I'll give you an idea here of the what the incisions are looking like. And if you see this line here, this, um, you know, it looks really distorted right here. Um, that is from, there's a chin strap that you wear, um, which I slept in. Um, and I wear that pretty tightly. So um, that's just from the swelling, just an indentation from that chin strap. Um, but there is some, you know, kind of lumpy, bumpy feeling here. 
Um, you can see kind of the, um, the tightness in the chin, which I'm really happy with, um, and then the incision on the other side as well. So the lumpy, bumpy feeling that she has, you can still have lumpy, bumpy uh, uh, contours on the skin following a facelift, and that has to do with the advancement of the deeper tissues. And over time, all those lumps and bumps kind of smooth out and you really don't see that as a persistent problem. It's day six post-procedure. There's still a significant amount of swelling in my lower face on both sides and the under eye dot seems to be healing about the same as it did last time on day six. So all of the brown dry skin is gone. It's just the pink skin. So it appears that she has a slight weakness of the right upper lip. I am not sure whether that is related to the asymmetric swelling on the right side of her face compared to the left, or if there is actually a slight nerve injury that may have occurred uh, during the procedure. But she has a weakness, which you can clearly see when she talks, on the right upper lip. And now just the healing process there. So again, as I've said in the last few videos, just make sure you keep in mind that a lot of the visual disturbance that you're seeing is as a result of the under eye dot procedure, as well as the upper bluff. So the upper bluff has really been a piece of cake. I keep forgetting to mention that because that healing is, it's really a piece of cake. You kind of forget all about it. Um, again, significant swelling in the lower face. It's really hard and tender still around here and completely numb, so on both sides. Um, so, you know, I'm just, I think the thing I'm most anxious for is for that swelling to go down and for that, um, you know, for that hard, numb, numb feeling to go away. The incisions, I believe, are healing as well as can be expected. Those sutures are supposed to come out tomorrow, so I will provide an update after I get the sutures out in the morning. It's day eight post-procedure. I was able to apply some makeup today, so I'm feeling a little bit better. There is still a significant amount of swelling and completely numb still on both sides. It was kind of difficult to apply the makeup because I really couldn't feel the application on my face. As well as my eyelids are a little bit numb, which I didn't really realize until I went to apply the mascara. And you can see the healing of the upper bluff. I didn't apply any eyeshadow just because I didn't want to do anything on, on my lids just yet. So again, I believe things are turning the corner. I'm still feeling significantly swollen. It doesn't show so much in this lighting and in this angle, it looks pretty normal. But when I look in the mirror, it still looks distorted and some asymmetry. She's talking about the degree of swelling and numbness. It's too early to be concerned about that. Everybody is going to be numb and swollen and it may take several weeks, days to weeks before all that swelling goes away, maybe even months. So it's way too early to analyze or get worried about swelling. Uh, I think that, uh, of course, she's trying to give you the daily journey that she's going through, but at the same time, uh, it's nothing to be worried about. What you also can't see, I don't think in this lighting, is the bumpiness. So there's some indentations that is normal as well. So I will continue to update you over the next several days, but I do think we're turning the corner here and it definitely makes a difference. Again, getting those sutures out yesterday as well as being able to apply some makeup today. It's day 10 post-procedure and I'm continuing to see reductions in the numbness, the tightness and the swelling in my lower face that continues to improve daily. So we're turning the corner and getting closer to the final result of the procedure. So again, this is going, the final result after a facelift takes at least three months to a year. And so it's way too early in her uh, experience to expect that she's coming to the end of her uh, recovery. It takes a long time and everybody has to be patient. Sometimes it's nerve-wracking because you see swelling and bumps and lumps and and everything hasn't healed up to a par yet. But over time things improve and 
you just have to be patient and you have to weather the storm and in the end most patients do fine if there's any issues that arise they can deal with them later but at this point uh, you just have to be patient so I hope you found this uh, discussion about this lady's experience following a facelift and eyelids to be informative I hope it gave, gave you a little more insight into what to expect and I hope it, you approach facelifting with a little more realistic uh, understanding of what the outcome should be and how what to expect. We, it's not a magic wand. You don't go in one day, come out the next day, and you're perfect. It takes weeks to months before that happens. If you have any further questions, please leave them below. And I look forward to seeing you again in my next video uh, on facelifting. And uh, thank you for subscribing to my channel.